BKW Physics. I'm Mr. McConley. Today we're going to talk about, we're going to continue from yesterday's lesson, we're going to talk about the conservation of momentum. So yesterday, we just hit the, the new idea of momentum. Now we're just going to take it a step further to the conservation of momentum, which most people call a, actually a law. They say it's the law of conservation of momentum. And basically the way it goes is, in general, you say you have some momentum before a collision. Remember, rho means momentum. And you have some momentum after a collision. So the before and after are referring to the collision. And in total, the momentum of the system, keep that word in mind, the system, so the two objects you're talking about, the momentum of the system remain a constant. And really, most of the time, the way it plays out is something like this. You have an object A, and you have an object B. Maybe we can think of it like a ball. My class here in the classroom just watched a video with two balls colliding. And so, if you think of that video, if you, if you just witnessed it, and you think of A and B, beforehand, Each ball had a mass, each ball had a velocity. Okay? And afterwards, the same is going to be true. Each ball is going to have a mass, each ball is going to have a velocity. However, probably the velocities will change because of the collision. By the way, this little tick mark in physics represents that we're talking about afterwards. So that tick mark is always going to be afterwards. <clears throat> so, you know, in one situation, you know, we could think of the collision, here's A and B running into each other. There's my artistic ability showing collision as a little tick when they hit each other. And afterwards, the two objects might retreat from the direction they came. However, their velocities could be changed based on a lot of factors, including how fast they were going in the beginning and how massive they are. So this is, when you do these type of conservation momentum problems, you always start with this. You move to the idea that each object has momentum, and then you break it down one more step. And you're going to become experts at this because we're going to repeat this process over and over again. The next step would be, you say, OK, we have mass and velocity of object A. Notice I'm being really careful to put the A, because I kind of remind myself which one I'm talking about. If you don't remind yourself, you get all confused, you'll be calling everybody the same name, it turns into a mess. Object B has mass and velocity. Object A has mass and velocity. And the only way I change it on the right-hand side is the tick mark. Thanks, pal. So you got before stuff and you got after stuff. And at this point, you are ready to plug in numbers. So I didn't give you a problem yet. I just gave you this general scenario with no numbers. But at this point, you know you got mass and velocities of each of the items, and one of them you won't know. Okay? So I think what we're ready to do then is to actually try an example. And let's. Let's do this. For a second, I'll turn out the lights. I know the camera has to adjust for a second. <clears throat> We're going to look at this first one. In this case, you got a 0.105 kilogram hockey puck. I'm going to write these down because I'm going to turn the, the camera back off in a minute. So we have a mass. We'll call it mass A. It's 0.105 kilograms. It's moving at 48 meters per second. So that's also going to be an A, because we're still talking about the same item. It's moving at 48 meters per second. It's caught by a 75 kilogram goalie. So we can't name this person A. We've got to name this, this goalie B. So the mass of this goalie, person B, is 75. And then the question is, what speed does the goalie 
slide on the ice. So imagine, play this out in your mind. The goalie's sitting there. The puck comes. Smack. He catches the puck. It's, it's a pretty high speed hit, 48 meters per second. And if he doesn't have himself braced, like if his skates are facing like this, what happens to the goalie? He slides backwards. Not fast, because it's only a puck, but it's going to move it. <coughs> and what we want to know <coughs> is what's the velocity afterwards of this goalie. All right? So we have all our givens. I'm going to power this thing down. And let's go back to our equation, the way we're going to solve this. We got before and after, before and after. So before, you got a goalie, and you got a puck. Okay? What do you know about the. Okay, it's the puck. What do you know about the puck? Is it moving? Yeah, it's not fast. Okay, let's fill that in. 48 meters per second. How heavy is this puck, mass wise? Yeah. 0.105 kilograms. I can fill that right in. Okay, now, tougher question. Goalie. How fast is he moving beforehand? Zero. Hey, that makes things nice. This is zero, this is gone. That just simplified a lot. Now you don't have to deal with that. Toughest question so far. When the goalie catches the puck, what is true, Cheyenne, about the speed of the goalie and the speed of the puck? They cancel out. Not quite. They don't cancel out, but if you catch a puck and then you and the puck move back, what's true about your speed and the puck speed? They're combining. Same thing? Yeah. They're combining to be the same speed. So this and this, note to self, are going to be the same. These are the same. Now in math, when you have two things that are the same, you can do this math trick. Pull it out, factor it out. You've done that before, right? A million times. So you can say V afterwards. Now, do I have to call it A or B? Not really, because it's the same. Okay, so I'm just going to call it V afterwards. And then in parentheses, I leave mass of A plus mass of B. And remember, remember what we're trying to find here. We are trying to find the velocity of the goalie afterwards. That's this number. I'm going to circle it in orange so you can remember that's the thing you're actually looking for. So next step, let's um, get some calculators fired up here. So this, this first thing is going to stay the same. I'm just going to step down and drop that zero. You said it doesn't need to be there. It's gone. And the only thing I didn't plug in yet is these two masses. So the two masses are A is the puck, B is the goalie. Do a little math magic and come back to me with a number, please. Give me a second. They're combining this mass, dividing it to the other side, and coming up with 0 0.067 meters per second. So, are you going to move back quickly when that puck hits you? Not at all. And probably if you braced your feet, you wouldn't move at all. But if you purposely kept your feet straight, caught the puck, it probably would push you back a little bit at a speed of 0 0.067, creeping back. So, for today, physics.